today we offer the third program in a new series called the Club Car Special. It brings you a radio dramatization of the march of events and city life section of the Hearst Sunday newspapers throughout the country. In this section, you will find the cartoons and writings of America's most popular humorists, Will Rogers, Arthur Bugs Bear, O.O. McIntyre, George Ade, and many others. Let's climb on board the club car special, settle down in the big easy chair, and watch the world go by with a great big laugh. <laughs> first thing we see as we turn to the March of Events City Life section of our Hearst newspaper is a snappy cartoon. Yes, it's a picture of a municipal fire company. The chief seems to be mad as hops. Anyway, he's doing a lot of hopping up and down. Gathered around him are a lot of smoke eaters standing flat-footed while he gives them a piece of his mind. Oh, uh, look, you bozos. What is this, a fire department or an old lady's home? Are you guardians of the public safety, or are you just a lot of stuffed shirts? Answer me that. Well, look, Chief, didn't we put out all the fires okay? I don't care how many fires you put out. Hey, what do you talk? We saved the 14 Eliza this week, the Chief. I don't care if you saved Peggy Joyce and all her husband. We rescued all them elephants when the circus burned down, didn't we? I don't care if you saved all the elephants in Africa. Well, what's the matter, Chief? If you don't care about the putting out of fires and the saving of lives and the rescuing elephants, so what do you care about, eh? I'll tell you what I care about. It's those newsreel fellas. Newsreel fellas? Yes, newsreel fellas. They've beaten us to three fires since last Tuesday. All the book, club call special. Next up, oh, oh, back in All aboard. O.O. McIntyre has millions of followers everywhere. During the late but not lamented depression, everybody had to forsake some of the things they previously enjoyed. But the people of the nation did not deprive themselves of their McIntyre. Man, that's loyalty for you. Think of it, millions of readers demanding their usual contact with this writer, no matter what else was happening to the rest of the world. Well, no one follows McIntyre more closely than does Billy Murray. And nobody likes to talk about McIntyre more than Billy Murray. So, Billy, how about it? Right with you, Harry. Well... Everybody knows how McIntyre likes dogs. Here is a quotation that Odd printed in his column a few Sundays back. It's a tribute written by Jerome K. Jerome, and it says, A dog never makes it his business to inquire whether you are in the right or in the wrong. Never bothers as to whether you're going up or down on life's ladder. Never asks whether you're rich or poor, silly or wise, sinner or saint. You are his pal. That is enough for him. And come luck or misfortune, good repute or bad, honor or shame, he is going to stick to you, to comfort you, guard you, give you his life. If need be, foolish, brainless, soulless dog. McIntyre says that whenever he feels his enthusiasm for dogs is getting out of bounds, he always turns to this tribute and reads it again. In another paragraph, McIntyre tells us that Ken Hubbard was more right than we appreciated in some of the ruralistic philosophies he used to write. Here's one from way back in 1918 when Hubbard stated the best way to double one's money is to fold and put it back in the pocketbook. <laughs> the other day, McIntyre described one of uh, Park Avenue's swankiest and most sedate drugstores. He said its windows have a plushy magnificence and they have on display perfume at $125 a bottle and toilet powder at $3 a shaker. Well, I suppose they charge a dollar a dozen for aspirin tablets, Billy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Harry, but they do make the clerks wear dinner jackets after sundown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then McIntyre turns serious and unfolds one or two not very well-known facts. He says that Queen Victoria wanted no black mourning and was buried in white, believing death would reunite her with her beloved Albert. McIntyre says also that he believes 98% of all breach of promise suits are really nothing but blackmail. But here's a good one. McIntyre states there's nothing so comic as a pedestrian trying to avert a funny posture when he falls on the icy sidewalk. Ahead of him the other morning, a man went into one of those Will Mahoney side skitters and wound up with one knee on the ice and with his arms extended heavenward. 
And what do you think a passing taxi driver yelled? Murray! All boat, club car special. Next up, Will Rogers. All boat. In his column the other day, Will Rogers got off on the subject of wars and how to prevent them. With typical directness, he turned right to human nature for a solution. Will figures that behind every war there's a man, and behind every man there's a woman. He paints a picture of a prime minister returning home from a hard day in the cabinet. No sooner has the weary prime minister hung up his hat than the little woman pounces upon him. Well, uh, I was going to call you up, but the Chancellor of the Exchequer has put through a new ruling. We have to pay for all personal calls during business hours now. Pay for your own telephone calls? That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. What kind of a government are you working for anyway? And are you a Prime Minister? What is this country coming to? I wouldn't stand for it if I were you. Well, uh, these days, a job is a job. You're too easygoing. That's what ails you. If I were in your place, I'd start looking for another position. I hear dipsomania is looking for a dictator, and they're willing to pay practically anything for the right man. I heard that story, too, but I, I couldn't get a job with dipsomania. I'd like to know why you couldn't. Well, for one thing, I just declared war on them this morning. You did what? I declared war on dipsomania this morning. Why, of all the mean, selfish, inconsiderate things to do. You know how I hate war. But you don't understand, dear. Now, please let me tell you... I don't you, understand, I... don't I? I understand plenty. You just want an excuse to go off on a lot of trips and leave me stuck here at home. Well, I won't have it, do you hear? You'll call this war off, or I'll know the reason why. Oh, listen, sweetheart, think of the position that would put me in. I don't care what position it puts you in. You've gotten away with plenty since we've been married, but you're not going to get away with this. Now, wait a minute, honey. Don't call me, honey. I'm going right upstairs and pack my clothes and go off to my... Now, wait, uh, wait, don't do that. You try and stop me. I'll show you you can't declare wars to suit yourself. Oh, Angel, listen. I'll call the whole thing off. Honest, I will. Cross my heart. I'll call the war off the first thing in the morning. All aboard, club car special. Next stop, George All aboard. In the Hearst newspapers the other day, George A. wrote about a little group of his Indiana neighbors who had gotten together and fell to discussing the banks and bankers and how many of the local banks had to close up shop last November. Well, finally, one old fellow named Luke Simpkins got warmed up to his subject and analyzed the situation something like this. the way things was going last fall, I about come to the conclusion the only way to keep banks going in the small towns around here was to elect directors who hadn't any friends or relatives. <laughs> <laughs> the average country banker didn't seem any more qualified to protect depositors and use his head in loaning money than he did to be an aviator. <laughs> I remember not so long ago, I attended a big stag party down south. It was just at the time when a lot of them banks was popping off right in their depositors' faces. <laughs> there were a lot of us Hoosiers present, and one fella, uh, full of sentiment, or maybe it was sediment, he got up and proposed we sing that good old Hoosier lullaby on the banks of the Wabash. Uh, another member of the party, a fella who'd been pretty badly hooked, got on his feet and said, uh, I move we omit the singing of that song. I happen to know there ain't no banks left along the Wabash. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, club car special. Next stop, Bugs Bear. Yes, sir, Mr. Bugs Bear. All aboard. 
Author Bugs Bear is recognized as one of the world's wittiest writers. His terse comments on science, politics, society, or any other subject in the daily headlines are recognized as classics of modern humor. Today we're going to learn more about what a man, Bugs Bear's famous fighter and hero of over 1,100 battles, all of them crooked. But no matter, according to Bear, what a man is fighting turtleneck nubins today at Madison Square Garden. It's just about time for the bout to begin. A porter. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Harry, yes, sir. Uh, will you cut that music on the radio and see if you can pick up the Waterman Newbins fight at Madison Square Garden? Uh, yes, sir, boss. Uh, yes, sir. Waterman down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine! Ah, what a man was saved by the bell, folks. Another second of turtleneck Newbins would have been champion of the world by a knockout in the first round. Listen to that crowd! <laughs> turtleneck hasn't got a mark on him, folks, and what a man is out on his feet. It looks like curtains for him, folks. He'll never be able to go another round. Ah, what a man's manager has pulled some plenty fast one, folks but he'll never get his boy out of this hole. It's all over but the shouting. Aha, there's the bill for the second round. Uh-uh, there's something the matter up there in the ring, folks. But so many people have crowded around, I can't see. Wait a minute, hold everything. I'm gonna crawl through the crowd and see what it's all about. Hey, well, I'll be, listen, I never saw anything like this in all my life. Turtleneck came out for the second round wearing handcuffs. Come on now, come on now, everybody out of the ring. Stand back, stand back, everybody out of the ring here. Where's Turtleneck's manager? Right here, Rip. Well, what's the idea of sending your boy into the ring wearing handcuffs? Is this another one of your frame-ups? I don't know nothing about it, Rip. Ask him. Who? Uh, him, Turtleneck. Hey, you, Turtleneck. What's this guy trying to pull? Who slipped the handcuffs on you? Say, Mr. Referee, how you talk. I wear them all the time. They're only slave bracelets. Our special has come to the end of another trip on the air. And while the journey has been brief, you will find a longer session of fun and nonsense by these same writers and others in the March of Events and City Life section of the Hearst Sunday newspapers. Think of it, long articles, each chock full of laughs written by the world's leading humorists. No other newspaper presents such a list of names. O.O. O. McIntyre, Will Rogers, Bugs Bear, George A., Damon Runyon, Milt Gross, Sam Hellman, and others. There are laugh-provoking cartoons, too. Keep up with the best humor of the day, just as millions of readers do each Sunday. The Club Car Special, a program built upon the articles of these foremost writers of comedy, will be ready to arrive at your home next week at this same time over the same station. Be sure to meet it and enjoy another 15 minutes of original comedy.